Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about the differences between the Taro 2D brushless gimbal and the Master G brushless gimbal. Which, there's a few uh, pros and cons to each one I think. And, um, you know, for the price range, obviously the Master G is a little bit more expensive. And there's some differences that I noticed with it that are making it a little bit easier. Um, first of all, the motors are a bigger size, they do have more torque. And one of the features of the Master G that the Taro doesn't have is the Master G doesn't have this crazy ring you have to screw on here. You can just pull the camera out after you get that ring off. And the Master G just has the case, which is nice and easy to work with. You pull the whole camera out, just take the back door off there, drop the camera in, making sure that your lens is coming through there. And then you can just put the door in, which is nice. And we'll power up the Master G here. And one thing you do have to do is make sure that this is completely balanced pretty good. Okay, we'll give that a second. And there you go. It's pretty much self-leveling now. One complaint about the Master G is I've had a little bit of wander. I mean, it's a great, uh, move my quad here. It is a great gimbal. And, you know, you really can't beat it as far as like portability goes. It is a little bit heavier than the uh, Taro 2D. And also, if you notice, um, sometimes the, I've had a problem with the roll wandering a little bit. And I've plugged it into the software and uh, you know, using the program for it, and usually it sets itself right again. Um, but as far as speed, everything's about the same as far as my gains and all that. They're set about the same as the Taro 2D. So, you know, it's a, it's a, for the, for the money, I, I think it's a little bit high priced um, compared to the 2D. It's got these rubber ball damping system on it, as the 2D does. And these are heavier. There's two different grades. You have the dark red heavier ones, and then you have the orange ones, which are a little bit softer. Or I'm sorry, the dark red ones are the softer ones. The orange ones are a little bit stiffer. And I'll tell you what, I've had issues in the wind with this thing. Um, believe it or not, it's like the wind takes it where the control board is and just it it does. It gives a little little shake there. And I'm not sure exactly, you know, if it's the wind hitting this part of the gimbal or the bottom part of the gimbal. And I, so I've had a little bit of uh, chatter or jello on the videos. Now, with the, the Taro 2D, I don't get any of those problems. And in the downside of that, you know, with this, with this gimbal here, it is a lot easier to get the camera out. And you just pull that out. Turn it upside down, and boom, camera's out. Now on the Taro, you do have to mess with it a little bit, pushing the camera in this way, and then screwing this faceplate on using these two Allen screws here. Uh, but once it's in, and we'll power it up, And we'll give that a few seconds here to power up. And you can see the lights yellow and then blue, and there it goes. Now once it's powered up, it works identically just as the Master G does. But I noticed with this, it is better in the wind with these softer, with these softer dampeners on it. And also it doesn't wander, the roll doesn't wander after a, a long flight. Another thing with the Master G that I've heard a lot of people complaining about is why does it only work for three minutes? Why does it only work for three minutes? Well, you have to log in and you have to register it. Now, these do come with a registration number and you might have to get it from the company if you have an older one. Now, the newer ones have the registration number on it. It was a sticker, I think, that was on the faceplate here. Uh, I moved it to the back side of it. But you have to plug it into the computer, register it, and then it should work because I've had the same problems where I'm flying along and about 252 on the uh, 
length of the film at about the 252 mark, it, the gimbal just starts hanging, even with the GoPro in it. And it's like it just completely dies, even though it still has power going to it. That's one thing I hate about uh, the Master G gimbal is that you have to get on the computer, mess with it, tweak it. You have to add the registration numbers if you want to use it uh, for longer than three minute flights, which is obviously that's what we want to do. And we don't have that problem with the Taro 2D. So these are both available from BVRC. And um, I don't know. The price tag on this is $369. It's got a little bit of shake in the wind. And also, I had to use a rubber band around the dampeners to stiffen it up a little bit to help with that. But the price is uh, $369 for this. And for the 2D, it's $149. And I'm amazed at the quality being all aluminum. The arm is aluminum on it. The motor mounts aluminum and uh for the price you really can't go wrong so the winner in my book i think is for the price of 150 dollars is going to be the taro 2d versus the master g brushless gimbal uh let me know if you guys have any questions i'm sure i've missed a point or two um one thing the taro 2d you can control more options in this uh the master g another downside is these are the wires that they give you a power cable and you have your tilt switch. This would go into your receiver. And for the Master G, it's sort of limiting. But with the Taro 2D, you don't have that problem. So thanks for watching, guys. I uh, appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel and let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks.